Well, hello again, all my fluid art friends. It's Doris at DF Designs. I am going to be doing, uh, hopefully it's short, well, it shouldn't be that long, a video. I'm going to show you how I flood coat pieces. Okay, normally I put my pieces down when, they're, when I'm um, done designing them. I put them down flat, which means I get an edge of resin coming out. Okay. That's where 80 grit sandpaper around a block is very good for knocking it off. If it's really big, use a knife or a pair of scissors to trim away the majority of it. Okay, and then, um, you know, and then just sand it smooth. And then what I do on the top is, is I sand it down with some 220 grit, which I just use a piece like this and I just sand it all over, clean it off with alcohol, and then you're ready to go. And I'm going to clear coat these pieces for you. So let me, I'll be right back. Let me mix up my resin. Okay, I'm back. I got my resin mixed. I didn't really know how much I needed for this, so I mixed eight ounces. I'm figuring about three, three and a half on this and divide the rest up between these two. I am using Stone Coat Countertops Art, art, um, art Coat Resin. It's got a very good UV protection in it. Mixed it for three minutes, scraping the sides, the bottom, and scraping my stick off. So now, and these have been, all been cleaned with alcohol. I don't have a stand under that yet. Um, I'm gonna just use the stand right here. So first I'm going to put some on here, and it's always best to have, that was only two ounces, it's always best to have too much than too little, because you can always make molds with it. And I do have an auction coming up on August 24th, and I wanted to let you guys know that um, It'll be at 1 o'clock because it's a Saturday. I hope uh, people are not too busy that day. Okay. Um, so, mark your calendar, August 24th. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is use my heat gun. Let me get it in the camera to where I can pop the bubbles and warm it up a little bit. I got the trigger and the handle right here wrapped because I'm getting tired of getting resin in there. And I always turn it on and blow it away from the project for about five seconds You can um, to get rid of the dust booger. Now I'm just going over it really super quick just to warm it up some. And the same over here just to get rid of air bubbles and warm it up some. Okay, and I forgot one little thing. You always want to have a rag, a clean rag, with alcohol. Don't do paper towels because they'll shred on your fingers. But do have a rag with some 91% alcohol on it, which is very, very good for cleaning off your gloves if they get sticky because I'm going to use my fingers to move this around. Okay, let me get this. The only other thing that I that I want to show you that I use is I use this light. You can see I've got the button wrapped and the handle wrapped because the battery's going right there, so I don't want any resin there. Um, let me see if I can show you without pointing at the camera. See, it's a pretty bright light, and that's what I use to see my pieces. Okay. Now, I'm just, I'm pushing it all over, trying to get it, well, it'll self-level. And I'm just coating the whole top. And it's okay that it goes over the edge, because this is the last coat. And it looks to me like it's all coated. Okay, let me do this one real quick and then I will pop air bubbles and look for 
dust boogers, air bubbles, hairs, whatever other stuff might have floated into the clear resin while I was applying it. These are taped on the back. The hearts are taped on the back. I forgot to tape this round on the back, so I will be sanding it when the um, when it's cured. You know, sanding the back and sanding off any of the overages. Okay. And you want to make sure, another really important thing at this step is to make sure you don't have any dry spots, meaning a part of the canvas or the painting that does not have any resin where it's got like a little dry spot in the middle, okay? Okay, now, I'm not going to show you how all of them you know you get the gist of it um now i'm gonna pop bubbles you don't want to get your flame too close you don't want to keep it in one spot for too long and something else i like to do is have my torch handy as i'm checking for bubbles and hairs and dust boogers because if I find bubbles, I'll use this to pop it. You know, I'll just give it a little hit. But, guess what? No bubbles. So, this is today's um, kind of little tutorial video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. I'm just showing you how I do it. It's not the rule. It's not the law of the land to do... Oh, see, I got a dry spot over there. Let me see if I can pick up some resin. <clears throat> Off the... Thing down here all you want to do is you want to get a little bit of resin on your glove and see now I got my finger all sticky with the resin it'll self level I'm just popping any bubbles I might have put in there with my um, finger See, and I hate this now that I've got a sticky, slick glove with resin. I'll check it again in about a half hour. I'll pull it out carefully out of my dust-free zone, which is one of those big bread racks. And check you know hit it again with um some um for air bubbles anyway i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think down in the comments if you have any questions leave those down in the comments too i answer a lot of questions from people so i am very good about that so let me um if you like it subscribe hit the hit the like hit the thumbs up and uh hit the little bell for the notifications too so you'll know, oops, didn't mean to get this all crooked out of camera. Um, so you'll know, be notified of upcoming videos. I love the resin right out of you guys. Bye for now.